Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an awesome move update for the Master Premier Cup, and that is Disarming Voice being given to Primarina. The problem with using Primarina in previous seasons was it only has nuke charge moves, so it couldn't generate a lot of charge move pressure, but thanks to Disarming Voice, it finally has a bait move. I tested out Primarina in some Master League Premier Practice battles with Waterfall, and honestly, the Disarming Voice edition is a terrific upgrade. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and check out Disarming Voice Primarina in action in the Master Premier Cup. Hopping into the first match, picking up a good lead, Primarina into Haxorus. Opponent save switches into Excadrill, but this is why having Waterfall on Primarina can be quite advantageous. As you can see, the opponent switched out of the Fairy type into their Steel type, but since I have Waterfall, this is a good matchup for Primarina. Thanks to the cheaper charge move of Disarming Voice, I'm able to outpace the Excadrill and win Switch Advantage. And Switch Advantage is big because that means that I can now align my Gyarados onto the Haxorus later in the game. Unfortunately, I fall just short of making the Disarming Voice, but now I have the alignment that I need. I have my Exca aligned onto the Metagross, and I'll have the Gyarados to absolutely crush the Haxorus in the endgame. I'm looking to overfarm here and fire off the Drill Run. Opponent, odds are they're probably going to be shielding here as they have quite a bit of energy on the Metagross. Opponent will try and go for the CMP tie. I'm just going to go for the extra here. My opponent will full send the Earthquake. I continue to farm. They send in Haxorus, and I'm now going to bring in Gyarados. Honestly, I should have just thrown a Drill Run there. That would have been the much safer play than banking all that energy because Exca does lose CMP to Metagross. They're going to fire off another charge move with the Haxorus. It's the Breaking Swipe, and that's going to get me quite low. Here, I'm going to go for an Undercharge. I want to try and get farm so I can hopefully make it to a move versus the Metagross. As you're going to see, we end up getting the perfect Undercharge and leave with energy so we're able to make it to the Crunch. Crunch is going to grab the final shield from the opponent. The question is, does Metagross leave with the move? In comes Exco. We lose CMP. Please, let this be the Meteor Mash. It's the Meteor Mash. Exca Drill hangs on with a sliver of HP. Drill Run takes out the Metagross, and that is a good game. Picking up a slightly negative lead in the next match, Primarina into Florges. Florges does have the edge in terms of bulk, so this is a matchup that will generally go to Florges, but the nice thing is Primarina can make it fairly close. They're going to fire off a Moonblast right off the bat. I am able to tank this, build up to the Moonblast, and I decide to bait with Disarming Voice. Anticipating a shield from my opponent, my opponent lets it through, reading me like a book. But honestly, I don't mind losing the lead here, because my goal is basically just to soft lose the matchup and go for a massive farm with Excadrill, as Excadrill with energy can basically beat anything in the format not named Chestnut. They fire off the Moonblast, opponent saves the floor just for a potential catch and pivots into Waterfall Gyarados. I bank a ton of energy on my Exca, and now I can send in my Dragon Breath Gyarados. Dragon Breath definitely does have the edge in this matchup, although they do have a pretty substantial energy lead. Unfortunately, I do not get the defense drop with Crunch. I will commit the shield as I do need to shield something in this matchup. I'm looking for the farm down, opponent with a sliver of HP does make it to the Crunch, and Crunch will get my Gyarados into the red. The nice thing is I leave with energy, but I do have to watch for a catch onto the Florges. They saved the 1 HP Florges for later. In comes Exca. They go for the catch. I'm able to hang on to my energy. And at this point, I believe this game should be won. Aqua Tail number one will connect onto the Exca, and I'm going for Aqua Tail number two. They have to start shielding here. Aqua Tail will be shielded, continuing to farm, forcing them to throw energy, and from here, I believe I have seven mud shots on my Exca, so I should be in a very comfortable position to bring in my own Exca, win CMP, and this game will be over. They know I have the back to back, they're just gonna let that move through, and that's game over. Great lead in the next match, Primarina into Dragonite. Even with Waterfall, Primarina does win that in all even shield scenarios. My opponent save switches into their own Primarina, but they are running Charm. Since it's the Charm variant, I can very comfortably switch in Exca here. Drill Run will connect. I'm looking to farm up, and I make it to Drill Run number two. As you can see, the Waterfall version of Primarina does charge a lot faster than the Charm variant. They are farming up a ton of energy, and honestly, my plan here is just to shield once and fully mud shot down, because again, Exco with a big energy lead is just the best Mon in the format. I'm very close to back-to-back -back charge moves here. Opponent is going to send in Dragonite. My goal is I'm going to fire off a Rock Slide, bank a move for later, and then pivot back into Primarina, as Waterfall Primarina is an extremely flexible pick. 
They send in Metagross, so they have a Steel type going up against my Fairy type, but with Waterfall, this is honestly not a terrible spot to be in if you're Primarina. I will commit the shield, and now I'm going for the Disarming Voice. Disarming Voice will get some chip damage. Metagross will commit the shield. Farm it up with Primarina looking to make it to the Moonblast. Opponent will not let that happen. They're forced to fire off their energy here. But now, I have a move loaded on my Excub, and I have Gyarados. Gyarados farming up. As you can see, I tried to go for the Aqua Tail before they made the move. Unfortunately, I end up not hitting the charge move in time. They send in the Dragonite to be met with a Crunch. Crunch gets the Dragonite low. Gyarados not quite able to get the farm down. This will get the Gyarados quite low, but the good news is I still have a move on Exca. So they can send in the Metagross. Looks like I'm not even going to need the move on the Exca as Waterfall takes down the Metagross. And that's a good game. We've got a Core Breaker on the lead in the next match, Primarina into Magnezone. Magnezone, of course, does very well into both Primarina and Gyarados. I'm going to stay in this matchup with Primarina, just shield, and try and get as much damage as I can. And this is a double nuke Magnezone. They are running Flash Cannon and Wild Charge. But as you can see, the neutral waterfalls absolutely tear through Magnezone, which is honestly not bad for me whatsoever. I'm going to double shield the Primarina here. They will go for the Wild Charge. My opponent is now going to send in Gyarados. Gyarados not having a good matchup here. They're not going to be able to farm down. They'll have to throw energy. I'm able to connect with the Moonblast and now I can send in my own Gyarados to absorb the energy and commit to the farm now. My opponent still does have the Magnezone, but I can leave with energy to threaten the final shield from the Magnezone or just get rid of them outright. My opponent is going to wait the timer here since their clock is not yet up and they're going to send back in the Magnezone. I'm farming up and going for the Aqua Tail. This will be lethal. Are they willing to protect the low health Magnezone? They are not. They're just using it as a damage sponge in the back. It is Haxorus and I'm going to fire off the Crunch before they're able to make it to a Breaking Swipe. Crunch will be shielded. We do not see a debuff. Haxorus looking for the farm down and gets the farm down. I'm going to send in Exca. Switch and catch onto Primarina. My opponent went for the Night Slash there. Night Slash, that will allow them to get a bit of extra farm. But Exca is in the driver's seat of this match. As the nice thing is, this Night Slash will not KO. I'm able to make it to the Drill Run, outpacing the Haxorus. Drill Run will KO the Glassy Dragon. And that's game over. Speaking of Haxorus, we see it on the lead in the next match. Nice matchup for Primarina. Opponent save switches into Snorlax, and I'm just going to stay in here with the Primarina. Primarina does not win this matchup, but again, the goal is basically just to soft lose this matchup and then look to get some farm on Excadrill. I'm going straight for the Moonblast here. Snorlax is very bulky, so even if I connect with this move, they would be able to tank it. My opponent actually decides to commit a shield there. Okay, perfectly fine by me. I'm just going to, again, let the Primarina go. Body Slam will connect. Primarina trying to make it to the Disarming Voice, but I die with the Charge move. I'm now going to send in Exca. I tank a superpower from here, so I'm just going to no shield. Opponent baits with a body slam. Oh my goodness, that is very nice for me. Now, honestly, superpower would threaten, so I will commit the shield. And then I can look to double up on charge moves here. So I can leave with energy to threaten the Haxorus when my opponent brings it back in. Drill Run is going to KO. Opponent sends in the Haxorus, and I'm firing off a Drill Run. This does a lot of damage. Haxorus is very glassy. I can send in Gyarados in the back. It is Metagross. And we have found the Core Breaker to my opponent's remaining two Pokemon. Snorlax is very neutral into this entire team. But getting an energy advantage on Excadrill allows us to really set up our backline for success. They're going to fire off a charge move with the Metagross. Meteor Mash connects. And unfortunately, as you can see, again, I was not timing my moves well on this day. So I end up playing into a CMP tie that I do not win. I should have just thrown one turn beforehand. I'm going to go for the Undercharge Aqua Tail, get the farm down, but definitely a misplay on my part. Aqua Tail will grab the final shield, but honestly, I probably should just commit to the farm down here. Aqua Tail will get the shield. We see the switch and the catch onto Exca. Hopefully, this is the game-winning play. Breaking Swipe does a lot of resistant damage. Hacks looking for the farm down, gets it. Do they have the charge move? They do not. And Gyarados gets the farm down. We see a familiar lead in the next match, Primarina into Dragonite. Opponent save switches into Shadow Snorlax, and again, we don't really have to switch out of here. All three of the Pokemon on this team can hit Dragonite for super effective damage, so I can just play this out in the zeros, and then just get a big energy lead on Exca. 
I'm going straight for the Moonblast here. If this is no shielded, this will do monster damage onto the Shadow Snorlax. Snorlax with a sliver of HP, able to hang on and make it to the Body Slam that will KO Primarina. But this just sets up incredible farm for Exca. This farm makes it very difficult for my opponent as they cannot safely bring in the Dragonite. Opponent is sending in the Dragonite. They try and catch onto Florges. I'm able to hang onto my energy and now I have the alignment that I want. I want Exca to be aligned onto the Florges, and then I have Gyarados, which can pretty comfortably clean up the Dragonite in the back. Again, with this energy lead, Exca already at almost two more drill runs here. They fire off a charge move. I can tank the Moonblast. Opponent running Petal Blizzard, the surprise nuke move, and that almost KOs the Exca. Exca able to hang on, make it to the drill run. That's going to get them low. In comes the Gyarados. Gyarados not quite able to get the Dragon Breath farm down. But I have an energy lead now, and Gyarados is in a very comfortable position versus the Dragonite. A little bit of lag there when the Dragonite enters the field, but Gyarados should still be in command of this match. Crunch will be shielded. We again do not see the defense drop from the Crunch. Dragonite firing off a charge move. I will commit the shield. I just have to make it to the Crunch, and then I should be in a pretty good spot here. Gyarados will be outpaced, but Dragon Claw is not going to be enough to KO. Dragon Claw gets the Gyarados low, but the Gyarados is able to hang on and make it to the Crunch. Crunch will hit for some solid damage. Gyarados farms down the Dragonite, and we snipe the Florges with a mud shot. We see the Nightmare lead in the next match, Primarina into Chestnut. This team is triple weak to Chestnut, so this is the worst case scenario Pokemon you can see. I'm going to send in Gyarados, but honestly, even Gyarados loses this matchup due to the fact that all my charge moves are resisted. I'm going to shield up the Frenzy Plant and fire off the Crunch. I'm looking for the defense drop. Crunch onto the Chestnut. We do get the defense drop. Frenzy Plant will not KO here, but it will do a sizable amount of damage as it's a very good charge move. My opponent is now going to send in their Excadrill and things just looking absolutely awful for me. I fire off the Aqua Tail. That's going to connect. Farm it up with the Gyarados and they're going to be firing off the Rock Slide. I will commit the shield as I want to try and preserve the ability to throw Dragon Breast at my opponent. And here, I'm able to catch the Rock Slide onto Exca. This play only works if I can Mud Shot down after. I'm looking for the Mud Shot farm down. Exca with a sliver of HP. That has to be one HP total. Makes the drill run. And now I do not have a win con. They have Metagross in the back. Had I gotten the farm down there, I would have honestly been in an okay spot to try and play out this game. But failing that farm down, there's just not a win con for me here. Chestnut is an extremely difficult Pokemon for this team to handle. Unfortunately, every team is going to have a weakness to a certain extent. And this team just gets absolutely destroyed by Chestnut. They go for the Meteor Mash. That does a lot of damage onto the Primarina. Primarina not going to make the disarming voice as Metagross just has way too much energy. Meteor Mash KOs the Primarina. And that's a good game. Hopping into the final match, picking up a pretty decent lead, Primarina into Ursaluna. Opponent is going to see the fast move, save switch into Haxorus, and Haxorus will be answered by Gyarados. Opponent goes for the Night Slash, hoping for the boost, and they do not get the boost. That is good news for me. I'm going to fire off the Crunch, as I'm able to reach it before they make their next charge move. They did not get the boost, so will we now see the Breaking Swipe? Breaking Swipe, of course, does get same type attack bonus, and will lower my attack as well. My opponent is going to make the last second breaking swipe courtesy of that debuff. And you know what? I actually decided to give up switch here. The reason being is Primarina is very neutral into just about anything they could have. They have Metagross. I'm going to pivot into my Exca. And now we have Exca versus Ursaluna. I'm able to double up on drill runs here. And tackle users are quite good in the zero shield. But if you have shields, like in this case, I have two shields. The Ursaluna, unfortunately, can't really do much of anything due to the fact that tackle does not charge energy very quickly. I decide to let this through. Opponent is running Ice Punch on the Ursaluna. I believe that was another one of the move updates. They gave Disarming Voice to Primarina, and they gave Ice Punch to Ursaluna. And now my opponent can send back in the Metagross. Metagross will fire off the Meteor Mash here. I have two shields. I have to use them somewhere. So I will shield up the Exca and make it to the Drill Run. Drill Run takes care of the Metagross, and that's game over.
All in all, I think Disarming Voice is a terrific upgrade for Primarina. To be honest, in previous seasons, I didn't view Primarina as usable whatsoever in the Master Premier Cup due to how slow it was to get to charge moves. It often found itself just getting absolutely overrun by an avalanche of opposing charge moves and just losing way too many matchups. But with Disarming Voice, it allows it to become a lot more consistent of a Pokemon, and even though you can run Charm, I do think that Waterfall has better play into the Master Premier meta, as it honestly turns it into a really nice generalist. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.